question. How similar is Lawrence to Zach Wilson in terms of mobility throwing on the run? Yeah, way? absolutely. I think, I mean, they use them that way. Um, they know the skill set. I think there's a lot of similarities in that regard, just being able to escape stuff in the pocket and uh, all the move the pocket pass stuff they do as well. So I think he's, he's shown the ability to throw on the run, whether he's going to the right, whether he's going to the left, and they use them that way. Jeffrey has to work through double teams a lot out there, I guess. What's, you know, what are some strategies that a guy can work through double teams and still be, you know, productive, disruptive, et cetera? How, what's, what's the challenge of, of working against a double team? Yeah, I mean, you're going up against two 300-pounders. you got 600 pounds on you, right? Um, I mean, there's techniques to do it. Like, number one thing, we're trying to hold the line of scrimmage and not get moved off. And then as that comes to it, the ability to shed when they feel the guys leave, whatever it is. Like, at some point, they got to make a decision whether they're going to climb to a second level, too. So I think linebackers come into play to taking some of those things off just in regard to his ability to possibly show back up and make some plays off those double teams. You mentioned in, uh, the other day that he, he feels like he wants to be more aggressive, uh, you know, hitting the o line instead of, you know, reactive. I yeah, guess. no, I think any time you want to try to keep those guys on different levels. When you're catching, they get shoulder to shoulder, and you're feeling that whole brunt of 600 pounds, whereas if you can strike one of them, ideally you knock them on different levels where you're not really dealing with all 600 pounds at once, right? They're kind of... One sitting you on the side instead of them getting shoulder to shoulder and being able to move you vertically out of there. The, go ahead, go ahead. the third down has improved, obviously, and, and now you look at maybe the issue of some big plays mm -hmm. being given up. Is there things that you can look at on film that, that is fixable? I mean, how do you fix something like that that seems simple, but. Yeah, I mean, we went in our meeting on Monday and I told the guys, I'm like, it's everybody. As we look at these big plays, like you have to evaluate yourself. All 11 guys got to evaluate themselves on how could I have made a difference on this play, whether it's keeping the guy in the pocket, which happened a couple times the other day, whether it's staying deep um, when I'm a half player, right? Like there's a lot of different things that come into play um, in regard to that. And it's not just one guy. Right, like it's a unit thing, and everybody kind of factors when those big plays happen. It's usually more than just one guy. I mean, they'll, you'll have your occasional where a guy gets beat, and that's part of the game, right? But um, just understanding like the the escapability of the QB, making sure we're plastered and doing all those things in coverage as it relates. We're averaging roughly five yards a carry. I mean, you always want to stop the run, but how important is it to maybe set a tone early in this one and, and put them in longer down? Yeah, down? I think it's big. I mean, they. Uh, Obviously, last week, Cincinnati, they came out and ran the ball well in the first half, whether it was Robinson, whether it was the quarterback. Um, I mean, I think that's a big part of their offense with what they do, um, establishing the run. We know about Robinson. He, he's a tough runner. Um, up front, it's the same cast. They're tough. They do a good job within the scheme, knowing what they're doing. Um, so I think that's a big key for us is making sure we stop that run, especially early on. We've talked some about the complications of covering tightly against bunch sets, the complications of that. So what's the solution on a third and short or third and medium where a guy has space to operate? Yeah, I think when those guys are stacked or they're bunched together, we gotta, we ultimately got to have a plan for how we're going to handle it. You can't just line up across the man and play that man when they're tight and bunched together or stacked together. you got to be able to play off each other, communicate defensively what we want to get done. Um, that way we can be a little bit tighter and just understanding the situation, what's going on. And there are a couple of situations we do, we need to be tighter. Um, that showed up on Sunday. What are the areas where Monty Rice needs to grow to start earning some opportunities on defense? Yeah, I think as this thing goes, the, the practice is important for him. Um, coming out here, being consistent, I think he's improving. Like on special teams, all that, we always talk about Excel in the role you got, and you'll get a bigger role. And I think he's kind of taking the next step special teams-wise. Hopefully that continues. Um, and then defensively, just coming out here every day, practicing, showing us that he can be consistent, a guy we can put in, in there and rely on. Bud maybe handled, but Bud, how much you kind of handle the patience part of wanting to return, and and if you are able to are able to get him back this week, how much does that maybe change things about what you want to do? Yeah, I, I mean, just like all these guys, he's competitive, he's frustrated. Um, I mean, it's part of it. Anytime a guy's missing time, they're going to be frustrated. Um, but I think he's handled it like a pro. I mean, I think he's been engaged, he understands what we're doing. I think he's been good um, in the room with the other guys, with the unit, just in terms of getting them up to speed, helping those guys out who had to step up and fill those roles, whoever it might be. Um, we'll kind of see where the week goes if we're able to get them out there on Sunday. How much your DBs, liber not liberty, but the uh, opportunity to, if they want to come up a little bit more and press or they want to play off more, do they have the, 
the choice to, to do that? Yeah, I mean, within the call with what we're doing, uh, specifically man coverage is what you're referring to, I'm assuming, right? Press or off. I think they got to understand the situation, right? They got to understand the situation, what's going on in regards to that stuff, too. Like, that's a big part of it. Like, playing off when it's third and five probably ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So just understanding what the situation is um, when they can and first, second down, it's going to vary based on changing it up in that regard. There are times where, like in film study, you'll say, hey, so-and-so, you know, it's third and five. You got to play a little bit closer on, on, on this. No doubt. I mean, that's been our whole motto, this training camp, this deal is we're going to challenge these guys, right? Like if we're going to get beat with them throwing it over our head, on a third and five route, we get beat with them throwing over our head on a third and five route. But ideally, we want to challenge these guys, make them make them have to earn it, right? Make them have to earn it um, on those shorter distances. How much does getting an interception fairly early in the season, you think, help Fulton's confidence? I mean, what does that do for a guy, a young guy like that? Yeah, I mean, I think that along with not getting balls caught on them, right? I think all of that stuff leads to a boost in confidence, which ultimately – at that position is critical, I think. You know, just being able to play with that confidence so they can challenge, right? So they're comfortable challenging and doing those things. Um, I think all the success that those guys have out there breeds more success just because of the confidence level of that position. Is he a guy who, who you had to coach confidence a little bit this year, or does he naturally have that? Uh, I think it's kind of progressed throughout. Like, he's had a good off season, He had a good training camp, and you've kind of seen the stages with him growing that level of confidence kind of throughout a little bit, and obviously it's been carried over to the season up to this point. Coaching a lot where you guys have all you know, see guys you have experience with, but with, with Mike having worked with Urban Meyer, Urban still being pretty new to the NFL, how, how, how much of an advantage is that to have that kind of knowledge going into a, a, this kind of game? Yeah, I mean, I, th I mean, I don't know if it's a huge advantage. I really don't. I think, I think the. This writing's still out there on kind of what this is going to be with Urban in the NFL, right? I mean, he's only four games in, just as that thing gets going and how how he translates to the offense. I mean, you see some of it, right? You see you see his imprint definitely on some things, but schematically, like it's him, it's the OC, all those guys kind of tied in together. Um, I mean, I think I think as this thing develops a little bit more, he'll probably get a little bit better. You'll get a little bit better feel for that. To expect a guy who's had so much success in college to be able to do a lot of the same things in the pros. I mean, how do you? Are you looking back at what he did at Ohio State or, and that sort of thing? Uh, no, no, we're not looking back at what he's did. I think we're we're familiar because we were there, kind of with some of the things, right? That that has been a part of his his offensive scheme, whatever it might be, for all of his time. But I mean, I don't know if there's going to be a lot to translate from us truly just going back and watching Ohio State film. Shay, did uh, John Simon maybe show up in, and how, how much does it help to have a guy who's familiar with what you do as you try to get him up to up to speed again? Yeah, I think he's in good shape. I think he's ready to go. Obviously, the conditioning aspect, just uh, playing the game, I mean, that's going to be a little bit different for him. Um, but, yeah, he was here all training camp, so I think the familiarity with what we're doing, uh, the terminology, all that stuff is a little bit different, a little bit easier for us bringing a guy in like that than a guy who has no familiarity. Farley was a full participant yesterday. He's ready to go on Sunday. Do you feel comfortable throwing him out there, or are the last couple of weeks of mispractice a cause for concern for his readiness? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see where it goes. Like, um, if he's got to play, he's got to play, right? Like, that's part of it. So um, we'll see where it goes with him as he gets through the week and kind of see where he's at as we go into Sunday. Um, but we talk about all the time, if you're available and you're on the active roster, you better be ready to go. I think the injury, staying engaged in meetings, things like that. I think he's been good. I do. I think he's kind of grown in that area. I think the injuries kind of helped him focus on that area, and he's kind of taken off and grown a little bit more in that area than than previously, so to speak, and probably because that's really all he had to focus on at that point in time.